Hey everyone, it's Rai bringing you intermediate guide number five. In this video, we're going to be talking about tourism, how to go about winning it, what you should be looking for when you're attempting it, and just some general practices that's going to help your outcomes much, much more. As we're getting into the thick of things now in terms of guides, these guides are going to take longer to make. They're going to have to be more intricate. I'm going to have to use a lot of, you know, um, example games and whatnot. So I just want to say a disclaimer real quick, but I'm trying to create guides to show you guys how to win games, such play games at your best when you're in a winning position. These guys are not meant for people that are just trying to coast by and play the lobby and, you know, noob whisper your way to a win. That's not what this is at all. These guys are meant for people trying to control the game rather than hoping people, everything aligns in your favor. Uh, starting with win condition guides, you know, there's going to be a lot of backlash saying this isn't the only way to do it. You don't have to be so aggressive, et cetera, et cetera. But any other method requires people to make a lot of mistakes, people attacking others instead of yourself, and most importantly, getting quite lucky to pull it off. And of course, all wins in Civ take some degree of luck, but any game is going to require some sort of strategy and we're going to be covering that in this but i'm trying to give you guys the path to least resistance where you don't have to pray that everything works out in your favor so with that being said i kind of just wanted to say that and then that this isn't just for aesthetics and tourism and stuff it's just for everything but i just kind of wanted to make sure we're covering that but let's move on into the thick of things so we're just going to jump right in you know when you're playing tourism what are you looking for so there's a couple things, and this is a very traditional approach. I'm not going to be covering wide tourism. I'm not going to be covering anything like outlandish. This is, or I'm not definitely not going to be covering futurism. This is just pure play, like tall into internet into winning the game, right? So what are you looking for? The first thing is you're looking for wonders. Wonders are super important. Um, there's a good amount of wonders, and this is obviously a natural wonder, Hermitage. But there's a good amount of wonders that give you a lot of slots for great works. We're going to be talking about how that works um, in a little bit. But for the most part, is you need you need to have a good wonder game, right? If you think back to like a lot of the tradition games, one, games where you're spamming wonders to, like crazy are the ones that you want to be thinking about um, using as as an example game for a good tourism game. And that's because base culture is extremely important and wonder culture is extremely important. Additionally, some of the best wonders, Sistine, Globe, um, all have slots that you can fill with artifacts and um, great works. So we're going to be talking about that. High base culture, right? Most of the, our culture that we're going to be generating is going to be coming from great works, modifiers on great works, wonders and stuff like that. But additionally than that, like there are certain sieves that give a lot of great work or high base culture bonus. You know, think Madagascar, think um, Brazil, right? These are sieves that just have a lot of inherent culture built into their into their kits. So something like this is another thing that we're we're looking for when we're playing uh, aesthetics. Because I'll talk about this in a second, but one of the hardest things is getting from aesthetics zero to aesthetics one in a timely manner. Okay, so. We're looking for fast guilds, right? You're you're building your um, your writers and your artist skills pretty much as soon as they possibly come up most of the time. Um, we're talking very very quick. Like ideally, you're working your your writer's guild around turn fifty five or something like that, right? Um, artist guild <clears throat> right after unis um, almost always. And then even faster than that, you need tech. Like you need really really fast tech to pull this off. A lot of the time, right? We're, we're looking – most of the time when you're playing tourism, you're, you know, you're going to have to go labs. And if you're getting turn 120 labs, you're usually too slow. Um, internet should be coming, at least in my opinion, should be coming around 135-ish. The sooner, the better. Um, yeah, like about 135 is probably fine. You need telecom really fast as well. Obviously, these two, you Oxford internet, but you know, getting to these techs takes a long time, right? They're really expensive. I'm gonna say like other thing. This is kind of less people focus on this, in my opinion, than is deserved. But 
faith is actually very important for tourism. A lot of people don't put a lot of priority in it, but oftentimes when I'm playing tradition, I'm building my grand temple because I, I when I'm trying to do tourism, because buying these great people, the artist, writer, and everything are so important for scaling your game. Um, additionally, for actually executing the win. And then finally, defensive land, right? here. Here's a game from a tournament um, where Cushy, Dark Cushy was playing. He won tourism and you know, his game was pretty strong, but the real kicker here is that if you look at his land, there's a one tile choke right down here, and there's a one tile choke right here. It's almost impossible that he dies uh, unless he gets like nuked or something, right? Like it, it is so incredibly hard to take this land in a meaningful way. Um, yeah, just very like defensive land is probably the most important thing when you're going about tourism. Oftentimes, if you're in the middle of the map, tourism is not an option to you, right? Um, it's just you're gonna get you get too easily teamed. So yeah, just keep that in mind. There's a lot of different things you have to think about when you're doing tourism, but these are definitely the, probably the most important six. All right, so let's talk about my quote unquote optimal route. So my optimal route is that you're either playing tradition or you're playing piety, and there's no in between. Let's talk about what the pros and cons of each one. Uh, for trad, you're guaranteed a faster game than piety. It's just a fact. If you're playing tradition, your game is going to be faster. Um, you can spam wonders much easier, and you are guaranteed, not guaranteed, but you're, you're very much likely to have high cap pop. Um, for tall piety, you know, buying musicians and artists later on is very, very, very important. And not only that, but you're, you're not really dependent on strong land. You know, I, that's the main problem for for ter uh, for tradition here is that you really need strong land to make it worse. Additionally, when there's more people playing tradition, tradition is a very popular tree. When there's more people playing tradition, it's worse for your game because that's less wonders that you can potentially build. Um, for piety, you know, similar to what we were talking about for the positives, you have less wonders. It's usually a bit slower and it's definitely more vulnerable um, than, than, than tradition. Let's talk about coast versus inland. Uh, I'm going to be talking about this a little more later on, but for coast's sake, you know, it's very easy to bulb. And I feel like when you're on the coast, it's, you're easily forgotten about. You're like, oftentimes you're seen as, oh, so-and-so will deal with him, not me, because you're on the coast, right? So coastal neighbors actually work in your favor in that way. The problem is with coastal neighbors, usually the there's a dynamic between both coastal players where you have to kill each other. Like that's just the idea. You're just going to go kill each other. So in that, in that way, it's not very good. Um, for inland, your game is generally going to be faster um, and you need less techs, but it's easier to team. And, and th I put this as number two because it's an interesting one where because you're easier to team, a lot of people will half-ass the attack. And instead of, you know, trying as hard as they can to kill you, you'll just be able to defend them both. And you'll win because of it. So it, it works in your favor in the sense that, like, similar to the coastal neighbor thing, where, um, you know, people are less likely to just attack you because, quote unquote, someone else will. But at the end of the day, it's easier to team you because you're inland. So another thing to think about. Uh, finally, let's just talk about uh, freedom synergies and kind of. So the reason why, you know, we're leaning tall and tall and just tall in general, I guess, is because we need to build a lot of wonders. We need to work our guilds very early on, and we need our game to be fast. Um, that just screams tall, right? Um, so freedom synergizes perfectly with tall. Uh, Avant-garde is great for, um, for spawning more great people. Um, it's actually the best thing in the game for spawning more great people. Creative expression is essential for tourism. Uh, in my opinion, it's very, very, very powerful. It usually increases your tourism by about 30% or 40% what it is um, when you get it, which is very big. Obviously, the culture is also extremely nice. Uh, civil society is just a nice sim benefit. Arsenal of democracy is just great for defense. Uh, free mind, media culture, and treaty organization. All these are good, right? The problem with freedom, and I've said this on all my streams and if you watch any of my other videos, but... The problem with freedom is freedom often runs into problems where the policies are good, but they're not great, right? None of these policies, except avant-garde, are just 
really, really good. Like none of them scream to me like Elite Forces does or, um, you know, moment, uh, Monument Happy or something like that, right? Like none of these are like that incredible. They're they're all fine. But the nice thing about aesthetics is that it gives us so much culture. And because we're pairing it with tourism, we're getting even more culture. We're going to be able to push through all of the freedom policies in the game, which freedom is then a really good tree and as well as ratio. So let's talk about this typical path, right? You're going to go tall trad or tall piety. Um, you know, I, I, I've done both. I like them both a lot. Generally, I think it's easier to pull it off on trad because your game's just a little bit better most of the time. After that, we're going to go and fill out all of aesthetics. We're going to oh, go to ratio one or two. Usually, I mean, occasionally you can do three, but the point is you just want to avoid taking the scientist as late as possible. We're going to go freedom three. You can either take avant-garde creative expression or you can take creative expression civil society. It really depends on your game and kind of what you're looking for. But these three are definitely like the first three we want to be taking. Um, and then we're going to pair that with universal suffrage and urbanization. Um, and that's important because urbanization is really powerful for sim. It gives us a lot of hammers, a lot of base science. But universal suffrage, sometimes you just need it if you need the happiness, right? So these are just some things to consider. Um, eventually, we're going to be getting them both. Um, so, and then finally, after that, we're going to fill out all of rationalism, and then you can go freedom 10 or whatever you want, right? You're going to have so many extra policies. You're going to be making like a 1,000 culture per turn um, that you can kind of just do whatever you want at that point. But this is when we'd fill out ratio. We're usually going to do this. Take the scientist, bulb into labs, build labs. Very soon after, get secularism, and then our game's going to feel really good. So this is that for the optim, quote unquote optimal route, right? This isn't going to be as like regimented of a guide because it's more about how to do a win con than it is how to play a tree. So it's a little going to be a little different than my other other guides. So if you're not familiar, feel free to ask comment uh, questions in the comments below, but. Yeah, so let's talk about how it works. So let's zoom out a little bit. So how it works. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be using Wonder Great Work slots to generate tourism. And if you see here in the picture below, um, because I have a number of different uh, wonders, for instance, like Hermitage, Great Library, etc., I can put Great Works in them and I'll talk about theming bonuses in a second, but I can put great works in them and those theming bonuses give me bonus tourism in addition to what they normally would give. So, you know, I'm essentially getting 50% more tourism just for putting these in the right orders and whatnot, which is definitely significant. Um, so the other thing is, and then after this, this is, this is all well and good, but after that, we're going to be building museums and archaeologists to generate even more. And if you can see here, you know, we can get a great work that gives two culture and two tourism and two culture, two tourism sounds all, you know, sounds great, but I'll show you later on how much tourism that actually is. Each one of these is a disgusting amount of tourism. We're going to be building our hotel national visitor center. The key here is have your musician set to spawn one turn after you get internet. You don't want to build this guild until you're about to get internet and generate the most amount of tourism per um, per musician. So you're, you're going to spawn this musician one turn after internet because the way you know Civ works, you generate the great person first, then you generate production and science and everything like that. So your science isn't going to your tourism isn't going to get adjusted until the next turn um, in time for the great person. So always spawn it after internet. Um, and then we're going to be bulbing our musicians into a or into our opponent's pers post internet, right? And um, we'll be showing you that as well, and why why that can be good. Okay, so that's just kind of the general rule of how tourism works. Uh, again, I'm going to be talking about this more when we get into the examples. But here's some of the theming bonuses. This isn't super important to memorize, but it's important to keep in mind. Um, in no particular order, I've just listed these out. Um, Sistine is probably the most important wonder in the game for tourism though it just gives so much base tours base culture it also gives two slots that are easy to fill so 
Sistine's going to be two same era artists. So think like two Renaissance great works for art. Like you can go in here. The Louvre, right? This is two artists two of different era and two archaeologists of a different era. Uffizi, so three of the same era. Um, Hermitage is the easiest one, three of different eras. Um, and then same era writer, same era, uh, different era writer for, for these two. And this is going to be an important thing. Most of the time, you're not able to get Uffizi and Sistine, right? It's same era and same and same era. So you're going to need five of the same era, not uh, all five of the same era, but you're going to have to have saved up a bunch of artists to, to bulb them at the same time um, for great works. Oftentimes, you're not able to do that without buying a couple without buying at least one artist with faith. And most of the time your faith isn't good enough to warrant doing it. So this is just something to consider um, where a lot of times you don't fill Uffizi and this is fine. You can fill it with archeologists later on anyway, but most games you're not gonna be getting Uffizi and um, Uffizi and Sistine. Um, and then here we are, great library and globe are not as high a priority. Um, mostly because writers are very useful. Um, I mean, artists are too, of course, but, um, you know, they're just, in my opinion, they just oftentimes don't matter as like the wonders themselves aren't as good as the artist, like Sistine. Um, Uffizi is also easier to secure most of the time. So for this sake, for this reason alone, like I don't put that much priority on here, especially great library, but I do put a lot of priority on globe. Um, the issue is Renaissance wonders in general are very, very hard to get all of, right? You want leaning for obvious reasons. You want Sistine, and then you also want Globe, and then you also want Uffizi, and then you also ideally would want um, Porcelain, right? That's just a lot of wonders to get, you know? Like, <laughs> realistically, you're not going to be able to get them all. Um, so you have to kind of pick and choose your battles here. I think, you know, getting getting Globe is also is very strong, but Sistine is definitely the priority, so... Um, but yeah, one is very nice for the extra writers you'll have. You're going to have extra writers that are just kind of not filling theme, theming slots. So it's not as big of a deal. And then finally, I'm going to touch on just very shortly, and you can look at the guides for this, but, um, like the wiki and shit, but for a museum, you, it's two archeologists for a plus four theming bonus. You need two, uh, you either need, you need the same era and your sieve. So your sieve in the same era or same era and two other sieves or any other sieve. So same era and two other sieves. Um, and then for plus two, you just need same era or you need your sieve or others. So two of your same, two of your sieve or two of any other sieves, they actually don't have to be the same. So this could be like Brunei and Arabia. As long as it's not your sieve, it, it works. Or that just two from the same era and that'll get your plus two theming. But again, the most important thing is just getting these artifacts in the first place the theming bonuses are definitely secondary because later on this is a lot of tourism all right um let's talk about something that a lot of people don't realize but is very very strong um let's talk about pivoting so here, here let, let me set up a situation right you're having a really strong tall game your culture is very good you have lots of ga because you got chichen likely you can do clausewitz land ships or tourism and either one is totally fine if you're unsure of tourism aesthetics is still good you don't feel like you made a mistake picking aesthetics just wait until you're you're 100 sure you're doing tourism to make great works so for instance oftentimes it's going to be around renaissance that you're going to be okay i don't think i'm going to get rd or i'm like not worried about that or i don't or even even something like i don't feel like i need or I don't feel like I'm able to kill the whole world if I go land ships. Which, let's be real, is a is definitely a thing that'll happen, right? That that just kind of not every game you're able to kill the whole world. So in that kind of game, um, aesthetics is a great option. In which case, when you decide you're gonna do Renaissance, you're gonna have like two maybe three artists lying around. No, not three. Definitely like two artists lying around. Just bulb them all into great works then, right? Um, you don't have to, you know, wait until the perfect time or you don't need to bulb them instantly. A lot of the time, a lot of people think like as tourism increases, it's very slow 
and then it quickly goes up here and then it and then it just like spikes up a shitload right most of the tourism is from this spike this is the internet national visitor spender site bike right this part here is pretty like you 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 can pretty much ignore this because this is probably worth about 1k like all together you're getting 1k in a turn minimum so it, it, it's really not that big of a deal if you didn't bulb your artists that early so i want to make sure that people are aware like this is still an option you have and a lot of people don't realize because it's, it's kind of fallen out of meta recently but i still think it's really good um this tall into aesthetics into ratio into into clausewitz landships these are some of the scariest attacks in the game because they come so fast the person is extremely prepared they have really good sim they have clausewitz on turn like 110 right it's terrifying so what's that path look like? As I just kind of mentioned, you either go to go Trader Piety, you're going to have a good game. This is the, the crux of all this is that you're having a good game. Um, you go Aesthetics 2 or 5. Most of the time it's going to be 5, but occasionally it, it's a preference thing. I've seen, you know, Grabo got really popular for, or Grabo was kind of notorious for doing this. And then I slowly kind of started doing it as well. And then I fell in love with doing it. So you can either do 2 or 5 as pure preference. You're going to go Ratio 3. For the scientist and then you're going to go auto six instantly after that um so you're going to take ratio three post schools and then auto six into clausewitz usually you're going to get 115 land chips or sooner with this strat right the scientist is going to speed it up drastically than normal we're going to oxford land chips and we're just going to try to kill the world so these are the two like it's not like you're locked into tourism until you kind of are once you've made a bunch of great works. But until that point, you're very flexible. Aesthetics is a very good tree to play on um, on tall because the science it generates is very useful. You get a lot of culture, which is super, super nice. Um, it's very synergistic. So just something to keep in mind. All right. Let's talk about some important tips. First one. Musicians bulb for 6.67 times current tourism. Since great people are generated before scientists in production, we want to spawn them after those are finished, i.e. the turn after National, the turn after National Visitor, Visitor Center, Internet, everything. Right. That's when we want to start spawning musicians. Musicians Guild should not be made until you are ready to bulb musicians. Whatever that timing is for you, but you don't make a Musician's Guild before that. I see so many new players being like, I need a theme Broadway. No, you fucking don't. Are you an idiot? What? Broadway is terrible. It gives you a musician point. You're going to spawn one like inorganically. Or you're going to spawn one organically way too early. right? We need that ter We need that musicians to spawn very, very fast. Because the point is we want to end the game quickly. Because here's why. And I'm going to show the cases again in the game. But here's why. If we're playing Tourism... We have the fastest win condition, right? We're probably having a, one of the best games. We have the best science game usually. People are going to team us 100% of the time. We need to limit the amount of time that's even allowed for them to team us by ending the game, okay? Um, staying out of trouble is the most important part. Do not use diplomats or trade routes to increase modifiers. These modifiers, like I said before, are very important if you're like wide tourism or doing something like with autocracy or whatever but for tall tourism this is just a way to get people mad if you use a diplomat people are going to instantly declare war on you and then your whole game plan is fucked right a lot of what i was saying before where it's like you have to try to design you have to try to um limit the amount of interactions you have with players because this is more of a test of your ability to get there fast and have an effective punch than it is um anything else um, tourism isn't something to do as a backup plan. Your game has to be strong to even really try it, in my opinion. You can do tourism later on if you're wide and, you know, the game's just a complete shit show. But let's say the game's completely even. Everyone's still alive by turn 100. Tourism is not something you could just be like, okay, maybe I try this. Like, no. You have to kind of go into it in medieval era thinking, okay, tourism is something I'm definitely considering doing. And then by Renaissance, you decide what you want to do for the rest of the game. Aside from in your cap, it's often best to save broadcast towers in case of a World's Fair vote. I showcased this in my Timurids game, and I also showcased it in my Overflow guide. So if you haven't seen those, check them out. 
But essentially, with uh, aesthetics, you can actually win most World's Fairs in lobbies that aren't completely imbalanced. And by that, I mean you can win a World's Fair vote as a four-city tradition player with substantially less hammers than the top hammer person, right? And it's just because broadcast hours allow so much for overflow. So I think in your cap, it, it'd be kind of silly not to build a broadcast tower just because it's so much cur- t- occur- uh, so much culture. It's usually around 100 culture or something. And that's not really worth it. But um, oftentimes it's best to save your broadcast tower for World's Fair vote. I think if you have some, like, an, a lot of wonders in an expand, maybe you have all thing, whatever, you know, maybe you build a broadcast tower there. But for the most part, I would just kind of save it. It's not really worth it. Um, the, those expands aren't making much tourism anyway. Uh, if we're talking about, you know, with the 33, 34% modifier from, uh, from broadcast towers that you get with freedom, um, trading post culture. I see some people do this. Uh, it's just bait. It's almost not worth to trade hammers for gold one-to-one unless you have gold modifiers. Um, you know, the reason why we send external trade routes outwards is because we're trading eight hammers for 50 gold, right? Um, it's a little bit different than when we're trading one hammer or two hammers for two gold, right? It's if it was 50 hammers for 50 gold, we'd still be sending internals. <laughs> um, but that's not the case. So yeah, just don't trade hammers for gold one to one, even with the culture. It's, it's not usually that important. Um, some, some people could argue that it is, but I don't, I don't think so. Um, hidden prior prioritize hidden sites first, right? Um, a lot of people don't do this, but, these purple sites, unless you're full aesthetics, you can't see. So you don't have to worry about other people taking them for the most part. But they are very, very strong. They give culture bombs. This is essentially a writer. Um, and it's a it's a really good way and a really consistent way to push through all of freedom. So the final thing I'm going to mention is, uh, before we jump into some of the games, uh, some of the two games I'm, I'm talking about, uh, Certain civs may have the ability to push an even faster win. This is all a gamble, so I wouldn't recommend doing this in most games, but if you're playing something like Brazil or you're playing something like Switzerland and you have a lot of mountains, you can potentially end the game before turn 120. And the way you do that is you go straight to hotels and then you start spawning musicians and bulbing into people. This only works for Brazil if you're in a golden age, obviously. And you have had a really strong game. You have a lot of great people, etc. Or you've had a lot of great works. And you're really, you're like, you know, maybe at 60% on the whole lobby before you even get hotels, right? Like, and it happens. Like, sometimes lobbies are just really, really, really bad in terms of culture. And you can do it. But oftentimes, it's not worth doing. Most of the time, you want the assurance of heading to labs, heading straight to, um, GWI is to defend off an attack or wait, like, you know, building up your military, etc. So these are all just some things to consider. Um, but yeah, let's just jump into the game. Um, so the first one I want to cover is obviously this one. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about bulbing um, and how this works. So this is a game I played very recently. Um, uh, we're going to end the game next turn, or in two turns, I guess. So it's turn 135. Um, in terms of wonders, I've had a very strong wonder game. In terms of tourism, you know, uh, I have a lot of great works, a lot of great people. I'm missing some of my uh, museums because uh, science really snuck up on me this game, and I got attacked by someone, so I had to defend that attack instead of building archaeologists. But oftentimes, that's what's going to happen. So... You know, we have Uthesi full themed, we have Sistine full themed, we have um, Hermitage full themed, we have Great Library and Globe all fully themed. We're at about 1100 tourism. And this is kind of one of the first things I want to show is how much I want you guys to think before before answering this or before I show you, I want you to think how much this tourism is going to increase from building one extra um artifact slot so this artifact slot is just going to go into here it's not themed you know no modifiers how much tourism do you think it is right how much tourism let's just like just like think like you think for a second on it but let's just let's go so we're at 1088 
Eleven twenty-five, right? That's about forty tourism just from one of these, and because we're multiplying them by six point six six or six point six seven, right? That's around three hundred culture or two hundred fifty tourism that you get extra per bulb, musician bulb, which is definitely relevant for the game. 100% relevant for the game. So that's what the power is of getting these um, these great works. Then if you theme it, you know, now we're plus four. Um, so this is actually interesting because I have a dish, I have a broadcast tower in here. It's giving me more than if it was being here. But essentially, like, I'm getting a bunch of tur more tourism just for having it in here. And if, actually, if I move this here, yeah, we're at 143. So this is actually a good time that I should be building my broadcast towers actually, but, um, but yeah, anyway. Yeah. You want, you want to keep them in, in cap, uh, in the beginning, but anyway. Okay. So that's that. Um, I wanted just to showcase that let's end this turn and I'm going to show you guys this is kind of the nice thing about being coast, right? So in this game The turn could roll that'd be great okay. In this game I want to show how just how much um Tourism the culture everyone has so Belgium's also aesthetics. He's got around 19,000 and Madagascar again a culture sieves coming up on 21k, right? That's that's a fair bit of culture. I think um, That's pretty average for a competitive lobby um, uh, You know you, you could expect if you're playing a good lobby that people are gonna have around that much by the time you're gonna bulb into them But this is why culture is good. So normally it'd be very hard for me to bulb into Belgium, right? He's an inland player. He's going to have his borders secured. I'm inland as well, so it's hard for me to find an angle. Well, because he's inland, I can just move one of my musicians into his borders here, right? I have six movement with a musician. One, two, three, four, and bulb. So this is some of the really important things that you got to consider when you're playing tourism is how, like, why I like coastal tourism so much is it's so easy to bulb into people later on in the game. So I'm gonna I can declare war on him. And like what let's watch this real quick. So we're at um, thirteen thousand on him and we're at about ten on him. So let's see how much we increase. So what you do is you know you you move your battleship in, same time, just pop that. Now we're influential over him. So we went from 13,000 to the 7,000 it increased it by, so now we're at 20. Importantly, this gives splash damage, right? So we're going to get a quarter of the tourism that we normally would from bulbing into anyone, into everyone else. So we gained some tourism from Madagascar as well. So let's do the same thing for Madagascar. I'm going to move one of my clads in, end that trade route, bulb, and bulb. Now the game is over, right? And the important thing is, is what I mentioned before, right? In this game, I bought two musicians, right? I still have a lot of faith. This is why having a lot of faith is nice. I also bought an engineer and an artist. That's how I was able to theme these, these great works, right? So having faith is really helpful in this, in this case, but additionally, more than, more importantly than that is I was able to have execute my tourism and spawn a bunch of musicians instantly, right? I was able to buy a musician. I got, just so we're clear, I, I'm i making 25 points per turn, or about 26 points per turn. I just spawned one, and I spawned one the turn after it. So I've been, you know, making this musician for three turns. We're going to spawn another one in three, right? So that's six turns total for that musician after having already spawned one. Which, me, which is kind of my point is that these musicians spawn really fast afterwards. So I've only had internet for four turns. So this was like 132 tur uh, internet, right? So I've only had internet for four turns. And I already spawned three musicians. I'm about, not about to spawn another one. And I can just bulb into people right away. Right? This is the power of, of tourism. And the other thing I want to mention is 
let's talk about how you can defend against this. The only way to defend against this from this point on, right? Let's say, let's say Madagascar was making, it's impossible. Let's say they were making 7,000 culture per turn. Would the game end from here? Yes, unless they had a writer right now that could bulb over this 26,000 threshold. They're, they're going to, um, the game's going to end because the tourism check happens before the culture is generated. So you end the game. If, if that turn ends like this, you always win, right? The culture doesn't come first. So that's just something I wanted to show, and then we can get the victory screen because I know a lot of people like that shit. Take that for the memes. And then there we go. So that's a 137, end of 136 victory screen. Um, kind of just goes to show what, what I was talking about before, where tourism can be very aggressive. It can also be very fast. This is why I love tourism for being the really, really aggressive type and how you can really control the pacing of the game. All right, so let's switch over to one of my recent videos, which I think a lot of people have been enjoying, which is nice. So in this game, it's a very funny game. I would recommend watching it if you haven't yet. Um, but I just kind of want to show what I'm, what, what's going on in my head here. So I'm playing um, like a five-city piety. I end up killing someone uh, at crossbows. So my game's really slow. But it doesn't matter because the rest of the game is also pretty slow and everything else is happening. So what's going on in this game? Well, right here, I just got my labs up in cap. I'm building labs up everywhere else. I'm f ratio 2, freedom 5, aesthetics 5, piety 5, right? So my tourism is about 300. Working approach. I could just mute this. And you'll see here the important thing is after I build this stuff, I'm almost exclusively going to be building units because I know that I'm the immediate threat. If someone else wants to win the game or contest winning the game, they have to first go through me. Um, they have to stop me first. I'm always going to, my, my win condition is always going to come first. And if we see here, this is the nice thing about wide aesthetics. Look at all these artifacts I have just from taking, um, cause I was able to build so many in, in expanse. Uh, so many archaeologists in Expanse. I only have Uffizi and Sistine. I don't even have Sistine themed. Like, I don't have great library. I don't have any of that stuff. But my tourism is still very good. And that that's, is mostly a, a product of just having really high, um, really high sim behind it and really high hammers. So I can just afford to build all these archaeologists and whatnot. So... Right here, I'm going to be looking for hidden antiquity sites because I want those theming bonus, that bulb, right? I'm also giving people a lot of unhappiness from being exotic on them unless they're freedom as well, which is super relevant. Um, slows everyone else's game down dramatically. And then you'll see here, like, I'm, I'm building happiness stuff. I'm building barracks. Um, after my hotels come up, it's just going to be full unit production in every single city right i'm building armories we're gonna zoom up like maybe like 10 turns or so so after the hotels come up we went from 200 to 600 right and then barracks in every city now and um you know we're just going to be pre-building these expeditionary forces a bunch of like th this is the point like after this point like you're not simming anymore you're done you're just going to go on full defense mode because right here so it was, I got labs on one, what was it? It was one, um, my National Visitor Center came up late. but um, And my musician spawns late this turn, but I talk about that in the game. Um, my, I think I got labs like 132 or something, and I'm getting internet on 147. So this, the timing comes really, really fast uh, if, you, if you set it up properly. Um, and then, you know, here... We're just going to be zooming in. I think eventually we just, um, I think they just concede because the game was pretty unstable at this point. But the important thing is I can bulb into him at any point, right? Um, he's got nukes and stuff, but it doesn't matter. If if he can't see the musicians, he doesn't know where to nuke, right? I have, I have a couple of musicians hidden. I'm able to bulb into his coastals right in the water because I have a coastal. So this is kind of my point where, 
even with a really slow game, if you kind of make up your mind early, and I wanted to do wide aesthetics as in this game, like for the beginning of the game. So I set it up to do it. So I was scaling later on, but you can still fall back on it a bit. But if this was something where I'm easily getting teamed, right? I killed my way into a corner. I, I'm doing tourism in the middle of the map, but I killed my way into a corner. So it doesn't really count. Um, it, it's hard for me to get teamed, right? So, there are different approaches. I kind of wanted to showcase this because it was just, again, like the title describes it. It's a weird way to win tourism, right? This is not standard at all. This is not like, you know, normal procedures, I guess you'd call it. Because frankly, um, uh, when, when, you're, when you're playing this kind of tourism stuff, you're just always just going to be bum rushing the end of the game. Um, and if you wait too long, if you wait too long, you'll end up, uh, you'll end up dead, uh, which is, I, I, you know, I, I don't, I didn't want to bring this video up, but I thought it would be um, interesting. Where's my, um, yeah, this is taken from the first tournament, but this is Amhost. Amhost is bulbing into me. Um, he got a really nice internet timing. He's got a lot of defense units. He's getting teamed right now by me and Abraxas. And this is the problem. Like he's having a he's ha he was having a very strong game, but because he's doing tourism, he's always going to be the first person that's going to die. Everyone is now against him. That's just kind of how you think about it. When when you're playing these tourism stuff, everyone is just going to try to kill you, right? Um, so. I was leading culture, which was kind of concerning because um, my culture of this game wasn't very good. But I'm pretty sure this came down to the, like one or two turns. He was one or two turns off. But that's often how it goes. If you lose tourism, you're, you, you're losing it by like one or two turns. So it's all about those small little things about, okay, like knowing how, knowing how you can, um, you know, knowing how you can, get little advantages much earlier on, like building your writer's guild a little bit sooner. Maybe you get an art, uh, an extra writer by the end of the game to push you over and bulb you into something or building your artists a little bit sooner so that, you know, th these are kind of just some of the things I'm thinking about where if, if I'm trying to do tourism, I know it's going to be close always because everyone's going to be teaming against me, right? So it's either going to be close or it's going to be not close at all. And if it's going to be close, I want to make sure that I have the best chance I have. Oftentimes, people run into issues where you're like, um, I, I don't know what I could have done this game or something like that, right? And, and then that happens. But oftentimes, it's your inability to, to get sim, get the sim down. Um, but anyway, that's all I got. Um, I hope this has been interesting. I hope you guys have learned something. Um, let me know if you have any questions about tourism in general. Um, you know, I think it's one of the more, in my opinion, it's one of the more fun ways to win the game. Uh, you know, I mean, like, look, like, I'm allowed to build so many wonders. I'm allowed to aggressively take control of the game by forcing it to end. Uh, I'm allowed to force the game to end on my, on my terms, right? No other tree is going to allow you to do that. And, um, yeah, I, like, I, I, I really like tourism. It, it's super fun when you win because, uh, it's just, it, oftentimes it comes up on people and they're just like, they're like, oh, what the fuck? Like, how did that, it's almost like Diplo in that way, right? Um, except it's obviously a little more, um. Obviously, a little more easy to see coming. But anyway, that's all I got. Let me know if you have any questions below. And I will see you guys in the next one.